Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. I'm Dr. Robin. With me today, I have Doug Crow. He's helping CEOs and other executives become an author of influence without having to write a single word. He's at Author Your Brand. And I have Kevin Wash. He's a coach, mentor, author, trainer, and speaker running a consultancy business specializing in sales for international property development. He is based in Spain. The question that I have for the two of you today, how do you get a team to make a difficult decision? I think the first thing I need to qualify here is the nature of the team. Because a typical team will have a leader. And as unpopular as it is, it's the leader's role generally to make the decision. The leader can take a consensus of opinion from the team and ideally get feedback. The challenge is really what the leader needs to do if it's a tough call is to get buy-in from mm -hmm. the team. The alternative, why I said need to qualify, I've worked in situations where, for example, the president of a company will say, okay, you guys create, come up with a decision. Mm -hmm. So you come up with a decision, you go back to the president and he'll say, no, I don't like that. Go and come up with another decision. So why didn't he just say, I'll make the decision for you? So I think one of the challenges, and I know Doug's going to pick up on it, I think a there's a natural challenge for a team to make any kind of a decision. Mm. Yeah, I was just you know racking my brain when I saw this, Rob. I'm like, well, what experience do I have where an actual a team did make a decision or had the authority to make that decision? And to Kevin's point, no, there's sometimes there's a leader asking for feedback and whether that's an authentic ask or a placating one, that's up to the, the leader, of course. It's like, hey, if a team's going to make a decision or if I give them the power to do it, do I have the, do I have veto power? And if so, mm -hmm. why do I wield it? It's a tough one because I've never been in a situation where we all voted. It's coming out now on blockchain with the DAO, the Decentralized Autonomous Organization. That's a very, very um, trendy thing that's going to be happening in the near future where it will be you know, a team decision. So I'm on a, a board of directors. I sit on a board and the thing that I've noticed, I'm, I'm pretty new to it. I've been on like, I don't know, half a dozen meetings. And what I've noticed is that they go around and around and around and they talk about things. And I, I think my job on this team is to basically say, who is making this decision? And what is the timeline in which they're making this yeah. decision? Because yeah. right now, all I've seen is you talk about it and table it. Ultimately, somebody has to, somebody has to make the decision. If you're playing in a team game and you're all trying to, carry favor with each other it's well I'll, i don't agree with that but i'll agree if you give me this i think one of the worst examples of this i've ever seen i worked in an american company and the bonuses of the management were determined by the feedback from the teams so the teams would all have meetings and they would make a decision on what they thought of the management and it was pure chaos the management would go around trying to be nice to the team four weeks before the review if they got a bad review for, for the next four weeks, they would go around trying to kill the team. It was, it was chaos. It didn't work. So I, don't, I personally, I think the key is get feedback, but I don't see how it can ever work, leaving it to a team to make a decision. Hmm. So often leaders are leaders, but they're not, they don't have the technical expertise. And so they've got a team of experts mm -hmm. that know more about the situation than they do. But to your point, you can't just tell the experts, okay, go do whatever, make decisions. Like you have to get some kind of feedback. I think that's a hard position for a leader to be in. Yeah, it'd be like Henry Ford saying, you can have any color car you want, as long as it's black. As long as it's black. Steve Jobs saying, I don't need information. I'm going to design what I want, not, not a focus group. Yeah. A lot of the work that I do involves training teams. And sometimes the message that I have to deliver to them isn't a message that they want to hear. But I think a lot of smart media leaders can use an intermediary like myself, that as a vehicle, to deliver the message. So particularly if it's a change in policy, a change in payment, a change in whatever the structure is. So my challenge is to position it in such a way that I can get the team to see it more as a positive than a negative and take away the, the political personality issues of it. That can be a good way to do it. And I've talked to enough consultants and, and change manager stuff, and Robin, with your neuroscience background, back this up. When you're trying to help somebody make a big change and it's going to be painful, it's always best to try to make it feel like it's their idea. So the sure. best way you frame those questions up to get them that you know feedback, you can get them open feedback and then kind of lead them a little bit towards where you want to go. And if they come up with the right solution, which is what you want on their own, it might feel like a team decision, but it's the one that you kind of planted in them to do it from the onset. And there's a, a style called motivational interviewing where you ask questions that say, what if you do this? Well, what if you do that? And you're not leading them, 
but you're helping them kind of realize, hey, this is where it's going. The other thing that came to mind as you were speaking there, Doug, my sister talks about this. She has a four-year-old and she says, if you have to take your four-year-old to the doctor to get a shot, you don't just show up at the doctor and be like, today you're getting a shot. Like three weeks ahead, you say, we're gonna have to go to the doctor and you're gonna have to get a, a shot. And this is why, and this is why it's healthy. And you like warn them because then they're prepared. And I think you have to do yeah. the same thing with teams. Like you don't just spring stuff on them. Yeah. You see, I'm not sure about that one, Robin, because I think sometimes if you give them the lead up over a three week period, they've got three weeks to come up with negative connotations and more reason to fight their case. If you just spring it on them and it's today. And when is this taking place today? They just need to accept it. It's a bit like, you know, if I want to go out for a night out with my friends in two weeks time, would I tell my wife now or would I tell her in two weeks time on the day? I would definitely tell my husband two weeks out. He needs yeah, time yeah. to process Oh, no, stuff. I'd tell her on the day. I'd He's more of day. a forgiveness and permission guy. That's understandable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And change is never easy, but it's always necessary. Mm. So whatever works for that team, right? Whether it's a spring them on them and get going, or if you want to help them, nurture them to have it be their own idea. It really depends on the change, right? Three weeks might be too short if it's a major change, but if it's a minor change, then probably you don't need a whole lot of time, I guess. Well, I think it depends upon the psychological safety and the culture of the of the yeah. team as well. And that goes back to our point about making decisions is that if you have a team that just blindly follows, they're not going to make decisions. They're going to go in a circle and be like, nobody around here makes decisions. Mm -hmm. But if you have empowered them to be successful, they're more likely to come with, this is the data and this is what we think the decision should be and basically mm -hmm. tell the leader here's the decision this team thinks. And it goes back to leadership and empowering your team to be their own leaders, right? So in my case, I give my all my team members a certain amount of authority to do what they want. They can spend this much without even telling me what they're mm -hmm. spending it on because I want to encourage them to lead themselves, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. but that comes back to the line. It's almost like saying you're in charge until I need to take over. Yeah, you can empower people to certain levels yeah. and those type of things, you've given them the authority to do that. But the big changes aren't coming from those guys. The big changes have to come in from the top. My work is predominantly based in the sales environment, which the sales environment is very much, it's a fast, rapid changing environment. You wouldn't plan something with a sales team three weeks in advance. You'd have a meeting today, you deliver it and it'll start tomorrow. But I think a good way to do it as well is if there's an opportunity for the sales team to say, okay, if we do this, can we look at something else? Can we review something else? So I will quite often sit with the leaders of a company and say, fine, I'm going to deliver that. But if we achieve this in this period of time, I want to come back to you and ask for something in return. Mm -hmm. So that way is a really good way for me to get the sales team to buy into what the change is, because there will be a benefit for them. I think the other thing to consider is that you can't give a team authority and say, here, I want you to make this decision and then take veto power and veto whatever decision they make. Like that's not psychologically safe. That's yeah. just pulling the wool. You can do it once, you can't do it twice. So I think the key to all these type of changes is if you look at your team, there's there's different makeups in the team. There's always a top level, there's a middle, medium level, and then there's the, the challenge ones. You've got to get the top level guys on board. If you get the top level guys on board, they will lead and the others will follow. You may take one or two people aside for a private conversation to give them a heads up of what's coming today. So they feel that like they've had a little bit of advance warning so they can prepare. Generally, they're kind of sharp people anyway. They'll come up with an argument quickly. I think you need to get those guys on board. Do you think that it creates the division in a team if you start cherry picking like this person gets information first? Like, does that create a problem? I think there's always division in teams. I mean, in an ideal world, a team all functions as equal parts. Mm. But I think yeah. that's utopia. To, to Kevin's point, though, he's, he's you know, giving information to his, his quick thinking leaders and the quote unquote betas in the group aren't going to make a must, uh, fuss about it because they're always following anyway. I always think it's a bit like uh, running a team is a bit like communism. Everybody's born equal, but some people are more equal than others. Mm. So there's always some guys in there, girls in there that you're going to give a bit more, to, a little bit more information, a better quality of lead, client, whatever. There has to be, because otherwise you're saying to the your top producer, this, this rookie that's just walked in, I value them the same way I value you, which you can't possibly do that. Right. You can put them on the same pay structure, but you've got to make sure that your top guys, top people are always getting the opportunity for you as a company to bring the greater returns back. Yeah, that's a good point, because I worked well, on yeah. teams where I was a top producer, but I was treated as equal as the person coming yeah. in. And it was so devaluing. Yeah, See, equal of opportunity, not an not an output. So that's a, a big differentiator, I think. Yeah.
Yeah. yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been a great conversation about teams and how they make decisions or don't make decisions and the mistakes that leaders can make with teams. So I appreciate you guys having it with me and I look forward to speaking to each of you again really soon.